Welcome in, everybody. It is another episode of Scarves and Spikes. We are here post uh, dupe in the middle of Philly rule changes coming into play and prior to facing the Supporter Shield winners. How are y'all doing? Did you say post dupe? Dupe. <laughs> I hate that song. I How'd you know what I just did before we hopped on? <laughs> because you just got done talking about Philly. So well, oh, I got that. Gl- I thought I had that glow. <laughs> you do. You do, because you just got done talking about Philly <laughs> and taking the appropriate action. So, Gosh. Sydney, Tommy, how y'all doing? Uh, okay. I mean, could be better. Are you going through like a midlife crisis, or is everything okay? No, or? no, it's just disappointing. But I guess I'm over it. Beat, beat, beat Cincinnati on Saturday. I guess I'm not over it yet. Tommy how Robinson is back. So, still not uh, happy playing tournament day for anybody that that is celebrating today. Yeah, you came uh, in with Hawks the um, you came with the Hawks jersey. I see. Yeah, very nice. I'm, I'm Isn't pumped. it like very Hawks esque to just like barely make it and then just break everybody's hearts? Isn't that what I mean, they they're do? not really in the playoffs or in the play in tournament, I guess. I, mean, I don't that's know. Close enough. They probably shouldn't right. even be there. Yeah, I mean, the NBA is just a, a disaster, anyways, and the Hawks are always a disaster. Okay. Like that's the worst. Funny. Like there's so much. Like they're the only team really in Atlanta that just has terrible ownership. Yeah. That's a different hey, topic I, for a different day. But yeah, right. yeah, different day. But anyways, yeah, just I'm here and I, I'm I'm over Philly. That's for, our, uh, that's for a Hawks podcast coming in. <laughs> yeah. 20, go, go, 26. Go. That's what it's called. Kaka, kaka, <laughs> kaka. <laughs> um, uh, we have a busy, busy episode today. We're gonna we're gonna talk about Philly as much as we might not want to. We'll talk about dupe. We will chat a little bit about these rule changes that are gonna be going into play this weekend because it's important. It's MLS, it's gonna affect every team, but especially Philly. Um and then we're going to have Jaime Macias on, who is a friend of the show. He was on last year, mm-hmm. and he will be at the Benz calling the match this weekend. Um, Jaime is, I think, probably one of the most interesting backgrounds of any of the guests that we've had, because not only yeah. did he play, not only is he an announcer, but he was also a go-kart driver for a while, mm-hmm. which I think is amazing. And as a Mario Kart fan, I will always look at that in a special way. Have any of you guys driven go-karts before? Oh, I think yeah. I have. Yeah. Ones. I love it. We have a place right down the street from us. Oh, I yeah. never, never follow the rules of don't bump yeah. into people. No. no I never follow the rules. Don't be drunk while you're doing it. <laughs> the only time you can like drunk and drink and drive and it'd be like good. So yeah, at least you're on a track, right? Yeah. And but it like when I when I when I'm never when I'm, going go karting with the two of you, buddy. <laughs> when I go when I go kart though, I do make like all the like if I pass somebody, even if it's like a five year old kid, I like make the the Mario noises. Like yeah, you gotta look at him like Luigi, like, like mean mug him on the way by, like you know, like that's like the Waluigi, <laughs> right? <laughs> Take like a green shell and just throw it at him, yeah. or, like stuffed Red shell. shell. Red shell's yeah, or, like Mario, just go woohoo, <laughs> just driving by people. <laughs> All right, well, we've gotten off to a great start here today, guys. Can only can only get better. It can only get better from here. No, um, we we have a game to talk about, but. We we got to do we got to keep the lights on real quick. So, scarvesandspikes.com. Make sure you guys are checking it out. It is uh the big big website that's up and running. We got articles coming out just about every day. It seems like we've got something happening on the website. Of course, it's where you can also access pretty much everything that we have going on. It's got our shows on it. It's got our articles. Obviously, it's got our shop. So you can head over to the shop. Get you look at this nifty coffee mug. All right. And look, look how conceited we are. See it on the podcast. Yes. I know you can't see it on the podcast. (laughs) That's why you can watch live. But if you're not watching live, you can always go to Scarves and Spikes. Our mugs are on the mugs. Yes, they are. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) And then it's going to be the sound effect machine. That's all I'm going (laughs) to contribute today. Um, And Patreon, patreon.com slash scarves and spikes. We appreciate the support. 
just the support helps us a ton. You have, you got, you'll really have no idea. Um, it helps us to do the things that we're doing for real. And um, speaking of that, coming up soon, Tommy, because you're kind of mm -hmm. like the resident expert on this. What are we doing in the Chicago? We, so if you have no plans next Saturday, if you do, just cancel them. Yeah. Uh, join the Patreon. We send out a link. Uh, it's a Zoom to Zoom link and come hang out with us for the game. Uh, we'll be on there chatting. Uh, Tyler, I just like to say this every time. It's just my favorite thing to do. Tyler usually has pretty bad hangovers the next day because <laughs> he, he's just going, let's bring out shots. He wants to do shots during the game and all that. <laughs> But, you know, if, if shots aren't your thing, uh, Sydney will do shots of lemonade. Uh, he loves lemonade. Oh, he, he will do that. Stop. <laughs> Stop. If you want to want to do shots with Tyler, that's fine. Yeah. Gummies with Tommy, whatever you want to do. We're, we're here for you. We cover all the bases. Right. He's watching along for sure. I can't imagine if Atlanta actually started winning on the road, how bad yeah. the hangovers would actually be. Yeah. If you're taking a shot when they start the game. And then when they score goals and somehow it ended up bad last year. So I can't imagine if we actually had a winning record on the road. My exactly. liver would hate me. <laughs> oh, I got the flower kit. Oh, did oh, the you? Earth Day you kit. Yeah. Yeah. Gave it to my wife. She, she got to wear it. it it's really nice. I, I wait till it's on sale. It's not worth whatever the, whatever I spent on it. It definitely wasn't worth it, but okay. I, she didn't watch the episode. I was showing her something and then I, I, I played it back when, I said I like plants, and Sydney broke, and we just kept laughing real hard. So she enjoyed that, Sydney. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Great advertisement for the the flowers kit, whatever we're gonna call it. Whatever we're gonna call, call it, it the pollen kit, but the pollen, pollen kit. Yeah. yeah. The yellow anyway. fever kit. Philly. Philly. Uh, I know you have some thoughts about Philly, <clears throat> Tyler. I do have some thoughts about Philly. Um. My so I'll I'll start then. My overall feelings about this match. Uh it did nothing to make me reassess my thoughts on Philly as a garbage team at all. It further reinforced actually, I think, what we've all seen over the years, not just Philly playing Atlanta, but Philly playing anybody. And you know, I I, I really don't want to make a big thing about the refereeing decisions, but the refereeing decisions have to be brought in when you discuss this match. Like there were some, there were some crap calls. Now, did they affect the overall result of the match? I don't think so, but I mean, it, it could be argued either way, but ultimately like the one that everybody is, is in a, in a fit about, right. Is the throw in the throw in was bad period. I don't care what anybody else says. The throw in was bad period. But you have to defend better. You have to defend better. There's two sides to the coin. So, you know, and we've gone back and forth. Philly probably had a reason to be a little upset at the end of the match when the, the whistle was blown. Cool, whatever. Ha ha, Philly, I don't feel bad for you. Philly also should have been playing with 10 men by the end of the first half. Also, period. Because in every other league, every other game, even within MLS, in this world, if you do what Jose Martinez did, whether you're on a yellow card or not, you will get a yellow card. And in his case, that would have been a second and he would have been sent off. That kind of rule enforcement or lack thereof is what drives me crazy because it's selective and I don't think it has a place in the game. I can understand you missing the call with the throw in. Totally get that. But you were standing there and you watched Jose Martinez throw a ball 50 yards down the field because he was throwing a hissy fit because he didn't get his way. Cool. He needs to be sent off at that point. He needs to be given a yellow card. So that's that's my quick thing on the refereeing. Daniel Rios got his first goal. Great. We have backup strikers that are scoring goals. That's amazing. Backups uh, to backups. Backups to backups. Like We've had more goals from our backup strikers in the past three games than I think we have had since 2019, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a great, great thing, right? The two mistakes, they you switched off for a minute, but you played a great game except for that, what, five minutes or so? Um, that was a good assist by Mascara. What are you talking about? It was a beautiful assist. 
It was also a beautiful layoff by like three other players, but whatever. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's it's a draw that feels like a loss. And now you have to go into Cincinnati with the mindset that not only are you a little pissed that you gave up this one, but Cincinnati is also the last team, if I'm not mistaken, to have beaten you at home. So true. a little bit of bad blood there. And uh, yeah, I, I think I think they rebound from it, but it's just a bad, bad taste. It's a hard pill to swallow for sure. You say two mistakes. I'll say three mistakes because you're pretty fortunate. And we talked about this, Tyler, on Sat Sunday. That third goal that was taken off for offside, Philly should 100% been awarded that goal. But you, you brought up a good point of the press box. Hold on, Tommy. <laughs> you, Tommy you, what, hold on. You're both making me want to yell, and I'm just trying Watch to hold it in. I'm trying place. to hold it in. So the the it was – it was tight. I know we talked about this, Tommy, as well. It was just really tight. And I think if the call in the field, if the AR had, not the AR, but if Freeman had given the goal, and it would have been, well, all goals are checked, obviously. I think the AR would have recommended a check, and the goal was stood because it was just so close. It was just so tight that, I mean, there's no way you're going to overturn it either way. So... I think really interesting call by the AR to call that offside. I think at Lady Night, I got really fortunate to have that call offside. Here's what I, here's where I'm concerned about. You have this team saying, you know, we um we want to do better. We'll learn from it. We'll get better. We'll stop making these mistakes. I get that, but you got to start showing it. And here you are again giving up two goals that you should have never given up because you just fell asleep. And I don't know if that's coaching. I don't know if it's just, that's just the mentality of the players. I don't know what it is, but I hope this is not a sign of things to come from this team. You know, granted, they've been very good defensively. Granted, they had a, a different back line that they've had all season long. But still, I mean, you still have to, you still have to be better. And, now you're not going to win many games, you know, giving up goals like that. It, Pineda said, you know, they're silly goals. And I agree, they were silly goals. You can't be a contender, expect to contend in this league, expect to tend for, contend for MLS Cup, much less a top four spot if you're giving up goals like that. So I just don't know what it is. You know, it, we could talk about the substitutes. We could talk about all that. It's just out to the guys that are on the field, making the right decisions, doing what they need to do defensively. You know, being mindful of what's going on, but these little mistakes, these little lapses of comfort, concentration, kind of paraphrasing Pineda, have been going on for a long time. And again, I just don't know what it is. Is it Pineda? Is it the players? Or who? Who is it? You know, I I, I don't understand why we're still having this conversation about this team for what the third year in a row. I mean, let, let's kind of flush 2022 down the toilet. That's an injury season. But at the same time, you know, we're still having these conversations with this team. And I see Dan's comment uh, about the offside soccer fo- photogrammer tree. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Like, I think that's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Had him nine inches offside. Again, you can't give up goals like that. Even if it was offside, you can't give up goals like that. You have to be switched on, and this team wasn't switched on. And once again, it bit them in the you know where, and they had to settle for one point <laughs> instead of what should have been hundred percent three points. So very frustrating, very frustrating. Tommy has been warming up. Go ahead, Tommy. After that, I want I want to get to some of the stuff in the in the chat for sure. But Tommy, <laughs> you look ready to unleash what you got. I have so many thoughts in my head at the moment. There's so many flying through there of everything you guys said, and I should have wrote it down, but I'm just going to just start yelling. This is the first time we did this all year. Like, we, we got to stop overreacting to, to things here. You, you won 4-1 to one against New England at home. You won 2 nothing against Orlando at home. You won 3 nothing against Chicago. Yes, you blew it. You blew it. You, you, but I'm not going to overreact and be like, well, this has happened a ton of seasons. If this happened more than one time, I th- I guess I'd be concerned. But it's the first time it's happened. I hate the substitutes. I absolutely hated it. And it didn't even hit me 
It, it might have been because it was Sunday and I was drinking mimosas before the game. I totally <laughs> forgot Dax McCarty existed. I totally forgot that Fortune existed. And I was like, why? Why are we bringing in Nick Firmino? And I understand Mascara. I think that, you know, as we say, you know, he could come in even when they when they park the bus. He can go and encounter and, and he's dangerous. I don't I don't like that Nick Firmino was the choice there. I understand you were trying to replace a one for one. I just didn't like it. Uh, I, I thought that there was, should have been something else. And were those the only two subs that we had? Yeah. That's, it. that's ridiculous. I, I, I just don't, I, I didn't like the decisions of, of the changes there. You know, you, either way, I mean, if you, if you went and parked the bus and you won, great. Um, if, you know, you, you went and got that third goal, which is obviously what it looked like that they were trying to do, and it works, then we all shut up and we're all happy and we're celebrating. So it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. I want to go back to the situation later down the season, whether you're playing Philly in Philly or whoever you're playing a top five team and you are up a goal or you're up by two goals. I hope you learn from these mistakes. That's what I want. I, I want them to learn from this mistake that they had here and hopefully learn from it and be better. Me too. Um, oh, sorry. Me too. But actions speak louder than words, right? And we need to see it from this team. And I agree. Yeah, it's only happened once. Like I said, I hope it's not the start of a pattern again with this team. You know, giving them leads, giving them goals where they shouldn't have. You know, we've just seen it so many times. So it may be a little shell shot based on the times that has happened to this team. So I'm a little. I want. I I hope. Like I said, I hope it's not a pattern that's beginning to go once again in 2024. But you know, just not good. And I'm getting called in the comments. I didn't say once. Period. I said once this season, the first time this season. Right. Um, but I, yeah, it, we've dealt with this so many times in the past with this team, 2022, 2023, and now again in 2024. And I'm, I'm trying not to overreact, Tommy, but still, it's just, you know, you hear the same thing from this team over and over again, and it doesn't change. Like, this is a match, again, playing that 100% should have won, and that's to not take away from, from the subs at all. They really like that. They 100%. It, it's it, uh, not an excuse for them to have lost this match, you know? I mean, it's just, yeah, you, you have to win. You have to win, especially at home. Yeah, I get it. And But one thing I want to add is at the end of that game, you had three opportunities to win it. You had three from at least just thinking. You had Mascara with the, the pinpoint pass over to Saba that hits the corner, right? That doesn't go in. Mayumba went through three guys and had a shot at net and ended up just kicking it right, you know, at the keeper. Almada had an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. This team... If you and, and you go back to the, the New York game right before that, you had many opportunities to, to beat New York in New York. Uh, you just weren't getting your shots there. The opportunities are there. They're getting in the right spots. They're not finishing. I get it. Finishing is obviously part of this, and that's what you need to do to to win the game. But they're, if, if we weren't getting in these areas, which I feel like was a problem last year, I'd be more concerned. But they're, they're getting even with the players that they that have been down, they're still getting there. And I put, put the comment about the, the oh wait, where, where are the road wins? I get it. I, I absolutely get it. You know, the Columbus game sucked. I mean, that's, it is what it is. I mean, you go back to the Toronto game, you didn't have your team. It, it was, you know, it was kind of like what Columbus did. Um, they put their like B, t B team in uh, against RSL this week. Got a draw, but I mean, that was that situation there. And then, yeah, I mean, you ended up getting the draw against New York, which you sh probably should have won 100%. I, yeah. I, I'm not worried. I, I am not worried at all about this team at the moment. The only thing I'm really worried about is just some of these injuries. Again, they're all two to four weeks. Like I said last week, like it's not like this is last year where you had a or the year before where like you had some long term injuries. That's not it. They're very short term injuries. It's just when these guys get back, can they stay healthy? You know, the Gregerson one's a little bit of a worry. You know, if go back and watch our video when we talked uh, to a buddy of mine um, in the medical field, you know, there's chances that, I mean, you can re-injure that. Um, hopefully that's not the case with him. That's the only thing I'm worried about here. I, I feel like these games that we're watching, we're not miserable. They're getting in the up. They're getting in the chance. They're, they're having the chance to score. And I feel like last season, until we got all the players in after the, 
the transfer window, the last transfer window, it was not that. It was not that. We had to score bangers to win games. We don't have to. We're getting there. We just need to score. Yeah. Finish. And Jason, with that comment about the road wins, um, and I see some people, you know, uh, Omar saying, I don't mind subbing in Firmino, just make him and Almada play in the box up top. Um, Bungle saying, unfortunately, Pineda hasn't shown me. Otherwise, he's only shown me the status quo for the league, and it's not good enough for our club. And <clears throat> I think that's where where this team you're you're I think it was Omar again. I don't even know where it's at, but Omar, yeah, Omar said this happened so many times. We have PTSD from it. I, that's a little bit true, right? Like you look at this team over the past couple of seasons and yeah, I mean, finishing out games or uh, falling apart late in games or whatever you want to call it has been a, I'm going to say it an Achilles heel. And it's, it, it's frustrating, but to be that's fair, crazy. I know to Tommy's point, like it hasn't happened this year and Philly is a good team. I think what irritates me the most about this one though, is that Philly is one of those statement wins. Like you should have beat them. And then you beat the only undefeated team left in the league. And we already know they're good, you know, every year, at least they have been for the past three or four years, but then you, you had the chance and you, you were a competitive team for most of the match. You just switched off for five minutes and it, absolutely ate you alive. And in New York, it wasn't even that New York was just tough conditions. And you, you scrapped out a draw that, that could have been a win very easily could have been a win, but I'm not as mad about the, the New York match as I am about the Philly one, because you do have to win the matches at home. You do, especially in the bins. And, you know, it's going to be one of those, you know, a crown over spilled milk type scenarios because it does feel like, you you got two points out of the last two matches and you should have got six. And yeah. you'd be looking at something totally different right now. But that's soccer. That's the beautiful game. That's what we love and adore. And even though it makes us crazy sometimes, um, RIP Man City. But <laughs> I just had to throw that out there. I'm sorry. Okay. But, you know, I mean, I don't know. We can beat a dead horse. It's frustrating. It's frustrating, but now if if these things become a problem, like if we see this this weekend, the week after that, like okay, cool, let's start ringing the bell and sounding the alarm. But if I if I'm Pineda, my first chat with the team this week after this match would have been, we will not have another moment this freaking year where we turn off the way that we did in this match at all. Like it's just. Every team turns off at times, right? But it seems like it, when Atlanta turns off, they get punished in the worst way. Every time. You got to get you got to keep your head screwed on for for 90 minutes. You do. You can't you can't stop. Um yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's happened you know so many times and you know, you, you you don't you hope it's not again three peat pattern. So yeah. But yeah. Oh, no. well, then Pineda's gone then. I mean, that's what happens. If this okay. continues to happen, then then Pineda's gone and we move on and and that's it. Oh, last point, mm-hmm. just real quick, yeah. what we were talking about earlier. Like, the calls on there, like, I understand, like, it's always, like, based on the angle. I saw angles where it looked like his foot was was in when he made that throw. Like, it's it's just camera angles of, of what you see. I mean, yeah. it was so close. I guess the only part that bugs me is... uh. The, the ref right there, she was looking right at his feet, like exactly at it. So, again, it, but it could be the angle that she was looking at it from. Right. Um, and then it was the same thing. Like, I texted you two. That's a goal. Like, that's 100% a goal. And then we see an angle later where, it, you know, they say that his shoulder's, you know, a thumbnail, you know, offside. Okay. Right like, I, 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 I'm not getting too upset uh, about, yeah. you know, both those calls. I know people really were freaking out about the, the throw in and I don't know. It, it was just so close, and we don't see what she's seeing. I, I wasn't really overreacting and, to that. And that's the thing. To me, the offside call and the throw-in call, I get how it could go the other way. I totally yeah. get it. And Atlanta got one in their favor, and Philly got one in their favor. Totally fine. Yeah. Whatever. It's the Jose Martinez thing that, that irritates me. That irks me to no end because, first of all, I can't stand whiny little babies. And I can't stand when whiny little babies are given their way. And I can't stand inconsistency in refereeing. Drives me crazy. Just be consistent. 
If it's a yellow card, it's a freaking yellow card, period, period. If you weren't acting that way, you wouldn't have to worry about it. That is a choice. It's not like you went in on a tackle and were like a millisecond too late. You miss the ball. You take out somebody's feet. You get a yellow card. Fine, whatever. Like you can you can be upset about it because it's it's a little different. When you pick up a ball and throw it 50 yards down the field, you made that decision. You're not five, dude. That should be a yellow card. You should have been sent off. Whatever. All right, I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. Can we switch the subject so you don't get more worked up? Yeah, screw two and a half men. I hate that show. I I, I am so upset that I agree with Jim Curtin. But like on on Facebook, like the reels after like we were to, I, like I, we were on Spaces and I brought up two and a half men. Now Facebook, screw you, Zuckerberg, nonstop. That's getting, all I'm getting is two uh, and a half men all reels. Your, your social media. <laughs> yeah, that's how I ended up getting into the Big Bang Theory. Like somebody mentioned Big Bang Theory at my house one day, and then I'm watching that. But yeah, all I've been getting is two and a half men reels. And yeah, that show sucks from the reels. I haven't watched much of it, so I can't give you an opinion either way. Tyler, what about you? Nah, I haven't seen an episode. I could care less. Really? Yep. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher um, was on the show. I didn't even know. Yeah, that. he was like, for like the past last two seasons when Charlie Sheen was gone. So mm-hmm. we we have some stuff to talk about. We'll talk about the rule changes, and maybe we'll talk about them with Jaime when he gets on in a little bit. Um, Colonel bringing up a, a, a good point, though. He said what I told my sister in Pennsylvania. Sixth place, still trying to figure out if we're good or not good. When bad happens so far, there's always been a reason, but have seen evidence of really good. Yeah, there's there's evidence of good. I mean, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, but Tommy, what you think? He said he said it nicer than I've been saying it. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah. Arnold. laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just get angry and start yelling. You, you know who died? Sorry, this just made me think because I, I was thinking about rants the other day and how I go off on rants. The Chelsea rant guy died. Oh, I don't. Did he really? Do you know? Have you seen? Have you seen his videos? Yeah, the like Chelsea, like Premier League Chelsea, that guy, right? Like the one that. Yeah, that guy that you know, he died. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just found that out this morning. Oh. And I was like, I got to stop ranting so much. Yeah, I guess he had like open heart surgery and ended up dying. Oh, there. Right. Sorry, sorry to bring the vibes down, but I was thinking about angry rants and. Man, He's now I got to rethink all my decisions about all my rants today. You know what? Screw I got to stop yelling. <laughs> right. Pull it down a little bit. <laughs> Coming in, raising people's blood pressure, giving people heart attacks. Yeah. <laughs> bringing down the median age of lifespan. I know. So sorry, everybody. <laughs> um. All right. As as we we can start talking about it because we can segue in with with Jaime, but the rule changes. The anti-Philly rule changes, as I will call them, just because I'm on that that soapbox. But the rule changes. Uh, there's a few that were supposed to go in at the early part of the season, and then you had the stoppage with the refs, and now we are back with Pro. And the proposed rule changes that have been in effect in MLS Next Pro are now going into effect this weekend. So my favorite of the three personally that I like them all, but my favorite is now refs have to explain the VAR decisions in front of 50,000 people at the bins. That would go great. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited. Like I, when I first heard about this, I was like, Oh, the NFL. Great. That's what the NFL does. I really don't care to be. NHL too. That's what sorry, everyone does now. Ago, yeah. yeah, that's true. But I, it know, changes I the game. Know. Sorry, but like it really does change the atmosphere in a game. Like if you watch the MLB playoffs and the umpire comes out and announces what the call is yeah. and it's in favorable of the home team, it goes in the, the whole crowd goes crazy. And like that you yeah. love that. So I absolutely love it. Can or you if you had uh, or if in Atlanta you get batteries thrown at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine like Angel Hernandez and the MLB having to come out and explain like why oh my gosh. he made that call? He wouldn't make it out of the stadium. <laughs> no, he would not. <laughs> not even a little bit. Um so we'll we'll talk more about it because I see like Jason saying talking about the two minute the two minute rule. Um Jason well asking. Yeah, it's two minutes. Uh how long do you have to stay off if yeah. you receive treatment? Um yeah, two minutes. We'll talk a little bit about it in a little bit. Um but yeah, we have, before we do that, and we'll probably get into it a little bit, but before we do that, we have a very special guest. Jaime Macias is here with us from Apple TV, uh, MLS, and lots and lots of history. 
Yep. We, we went into last time. I won't go into it this time, but I just think the go-kart thing is it, it trips me out and I love it, man. How you doing, guys? A pleasure talking to you as always. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's, luck, Mac. it's always um, it's always a talking point. I don't know if I should have it here because usually what I do is soccer, so I don't know if I should be there. Um, We're all over the place, so feel free. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, like uh, I published a book last year. I think I, I, I told you about it, and, and uh, the, the, the only way to understand how deep – the connection between motorsport and soccer is in where I'm now. It's uh, it's reading the book, which is 300 pages, so it's it's not an easy explanation. <laughs> totally, totally understand. Totally understand. Do you Mario Kart? Oh man, I'm, you know I don't want to be informal, but uh, <laughs> you know I think we can do this for a second. No, I didn't want to take the camera out. Uh, I'm just going to show it to you. Oh because- yes. Because oh. you're friends, yes. Oh. <laughs> so it's not the, the the it's not Mario Kart. It's a, it's a Formula One simulator. Oh, Ooh, that's amazing! Very nice. Very nice. So it's very tight, and uh, um, yeah, and, and and I race against the the poster of my favorite movie, which is Are you seeing it? Yes, right. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. yeah, which is uh, Days of Thunder. So uh, okay, you, you, you haven't watched that movie. Um, I've never seen it. They say that it's a movie. Where Tom Cruise um, meet Nicole Kidman, but I don't. Oh, okay. Know. Okay. Days of Thunder, man. You gotta, you gotta watch the movie. Best movie ever. Okay. So now we all have a plan as soon as we get done with the show tonight. Like <laughs> exactly. we've learned so much in the past minute and a half since you've been on. Like I'm so ready to go now. <laughs> I want, I want your your reviews, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So. We let's see. I'm honestly, I'm trying to remember last last year. I can't remember which match it was. It was prior to, but Atlanta has obviously changed immensely since then. But so has the New England game. It was new. Okay, it was New England, and yeah, yeah that, that that New England that scares a lot of people. Yes, <laughs> yes, and, and things have things have changed immensely. Not only with New England, not only with Atlanta, but with the league as a whole. What in the year and a quarter or so that you've been, I guess, with Apple? What has surprised you most about MLS this year, or this year and and last year, if you want to go back? Um, I think that the, the that the quality had improved. Um, you know, there is always improvement, but there is always like a breaking point, and and I think that Atlanta it's it, it's it's one of those breaking points, or has a lot of responsibility in one of those breaking points because uh, b- before Atlanta, before Martino, right? Um. Yeah, I I feel that there was like this. I don't know if you saw my 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 graphic about the um, the origin of different coaches, where the coaches come from. Um, uh, it was a very nerd exercise, but I I, I really like doing it. So I we think that every, every 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 coach, uh, and it's in my Instagram. If you want to go back and, and see it, uh, it should be like 10, 10 uh, publications below. So I think that. They all the MLS coaches were coming from a from a from a specific um, uh, variant for a specific angle, uh, and everybody was trying to kind of do the same with more experienced managers or managers that were learning under those managers. Um, there were some a couple of experiments of Queiroz, Juan Carlos Osorio. I'm I'm talking big picture, right? Um, but probably they they didn't connect with the philosophy of the sports in the US and and and, and their projects were not very successful uh, and i think that 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 seattle with uh, uh and look sig it was amazing but but sig was not successful with seattle it, it was actually when he when he leave the team that that the team start start uh, performing with Spencer. and i think that the first team that click after that seattle project is atlanta a coach that came from outside and 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 bring some different ideas and um, select DPs that they were not DPs that make great highlights because of what they did before they did great highlights by what they were doing in the league and a lot of teams start copying that philosophy and and now we have like a melting pot because um, uh, Gonzalo Pineda is one thing, um, Wilfred Nance is another thing, 
Uh, Steve Sherundolo, even though we know he's American and, and that he played a World Cup with the national team, soccer-wise, he's German. He, he's German. He, he, he developed as a player in Hanover. He was managed by Raf Radnik over there. Raf Radnik also managed uh, Bradley Carnell. So we have like a, this melting pot that not every team plays the same way. We have this mixture of styles. We have, uh, and we are in a pattern. And, and we're going to talk about this probably uh, further down the show if you want. Um, MLS teams are every year less number. 10 dependent the last two champions they didn't play with a number 10 they didn't play with a number 10 and and i think that for example this atlanta team even though we know tiago is great and he's an amazing player is not a tiago dependent team as for example since he is a very lucho dependent team on 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 their creation so i think that we're in that transition like there was a point in the world where we're we're, we're where nobody was using number 10s and all the 10s were coming to MLS because the teams were still using number 10s. And when, like, we can count how many teams are playing with number 10 and they're not much. And if we go to 2020, more than half the league was playing with number 10. Sorry for the long explanation. No, no, no. It's interesting <laughs> you bring that up because you also have that English influence. Um, you have, of course, Gary Smith and Nashville and the style of play he prefers. Um, you have Dean Smith. No relation, obviously, um, up in Charlotte. He, of course, has his style that he's trying to install on the team. So you have the English influence. I mean, the English influence has always been there. But then you talk about coaches like Monsi. You talk about coaches like in Montreal, uh, Gerundolo in LAFC. You know, that definitely de- you definitely see evidence of that melting pot um, in MLS. And I imagine that will continue as the league continues to grow and mature, I think, especially after the World Cup. For sure, for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm pasting you in the chat. Uh, what, what, what I was, what I was talking. Uh, for sure, and 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 everybody develops teams in a different area, right? Every, every, every. Like, I, I love the story of Wilfred Nancy and and and, and the story of of, of uh, John Herman. Two guys that came to the big stage through Canada, right? It, it through yeah. MLS, but through through through, through Canada. Uh, because they are coaches that they, they didn't have like a great career and they have incorporated a lot of um, things from different philosophies, from different teams, from, from uh, in, in one of the times I, I got a chance to talk to, to, to John Herman and he, he was like, how when he was in New Zealand, the coaches from the different national teams for different sports sometimes get together or they have conference together and they, 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 they bring together stuff. So, and, and you know what? It's very hard to, to, to find a country with so many top sports leagues as the US, right? Uh, and I was reading a book and, and they were talking about the, the evolution of total football. Uh, and they were saying total football will never be developed if in that country, they were talking about the, the East Europe. I think the Soviet Union at that point, total football would have never been developed if it was not in a country where they play hockey. Because it has so much from hockey that you can see the connection. And I was like, for sure. And sometimes we, we only we think about soccer thinking about soccer. And there are things that come from, from outside. And that's that's what I like about MLS, that that it's not like a straight line. When everybody tries to play the same way, the best squad is always gonna win. But when coaches are trying to put their ideas, that's when we get this melting pot that is, that is great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really good insight. Really appreciate that insight. So you'll be at Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Saturday, of course, and we all know about Cincinnati winning the Supporter Shield last year. Of course, it's going to be a big occasion. Miles Robinson coming back to Atlanta first time since he signed for Cincinnati. Um, but what do you think? What do you make of Atlanta start this year? As you've kind of studied both teams, what do you make of Atlanta? Obviously, coming off that really disappointing draw against um, against Philadelphia, how are they different from last year in your eyes? I think that the only the only disappointing point from from what I expect is, is the draw against against Philly. Then you put in the context, and Philly's unbidden, so it's not like you uh, lose two points against a team that that that. Is struggling. It's not that you lose two points against 
to put a name, Dallas or Nashville. You are putting a, a team that against you are losing points against the only team that it's that it's embedded. I, I was checking on stat, and I would like to see Atlanta fighting for the for the for the for the for the conference. Uh, 2018, the Red Bulls was the last time that a team that competed in CONCACAF Champions Cup won the conference, right? Because you got to take advantage of those teams that are having double competition at the beginning of the season. And, and even though we know they are, apart from Columbus, all eliminated, well, they, 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 they lose a lot of points. Unlucky for Atlanta, their bye week was in between those matches. I think Atlanta had the bye week on the first or in the second week of the of the season, so uh, they couldn't get get advantage over there. But the, the the thing that I really like about about Atlanta and 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 it's one of my my talking points on on uh, on the beginning of the of the game is uh, how hard this midfield had become, how better defensively the team is from the middle of the pitch it's not relying on the goalie only on the goalie or only on the center backs um and i'm i'm sure i always say like if those signings were available because they were signed early on the summer but they were not available until late in the summer probably atlanta will have had a home advantage in the round of best of three and i don't think anybody could beat columbus <laughs> um but I think they will have like a better run. And that's what I'm seeing on, on, on the team. It's a team that it's more solid. It's a team that even though the games that they didn't win does not suffer the games. It's in the game. And if you're a team that you're, you're always in the game, you're going to get a, a run for the money for everybody. Indeed. So, yeah, that midfield of Muyen Ba and Slish, um has come in. Of course, Leash got signed before the season. Emilia Ba has been here since half of the season, since the latter portion of the season last year. So you kind of talked about it, but you know they've kind of yeah needed some type of job. But what what is your what is your opinion of them? I mean, you just mentioned it, but how how is Slish especially coming over from Ligia Warsaw adjusted to MLS in your eyes? I think that that he had adapted uh, very good. I think that he's a very very good complement with 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 Muyumba. I think that Muyumba had uh, improved the recovering capabilities that what Atlanta had before. And even though he's very good with the ball, uh, sometimes you need that double uh, double um, number five or. Yeah, well, I'm going to do something about the numbers because it has a weird explanation, but that, that defensive midfielder, right? Uh, and, and if you see, for example, and uh, Houston is doing something similar, right? In the paper, they are one next to the other one, but they're never one next to the other one, right? There, there's When the, when the other team is building up, Muyumba is freer and moving forward and, closing, and playing closer to the defensive midfielder of the other team, almost in a 10 position to recover. And the more... Uh, quality midfielders from Atlanta dropping back. So when they recover, they have a lot of passing opportunities forward. So I think that it, it's individually they have that great, but together they are playing at a great level. And and that's something that it's very different, difficult to find because we're going to, you know, uh, I was talking with a producer the other day where when you have highlights as a, as a player, television wise is great. But it's a weakness on a team. When a team is performing and it's very hard to find individual highlights of players, then is when things are going good. And I think that that's kind of what we are seeing on the Atlanta midfield. We know we all think they're playing at a great level, but we don't have a, a, a single moment to do a clip. I'm talking about the, the four of us, right? A single moment to show a clip. Because it's it's a midfield, it's not an individual player. So a Atlanta and Cincinnati had played some real good games last season. Um, both games, Atlanta took the lead and then ended up blowing it, basically. Right? Uh, one was a loss. One, I think, one was the last one was a draw. Right? On, on yeah, on decision day. Okay. So. I haven't get to that kind of part of my preparation. I usually do that on the the, the day before. <laughs> well, you're welcome. We'll get you there. I, I, 
what you, you look at this matchup what stands out to you um about this game um and i was discussing this with danny higginbottom who's going to call the game in, in english right um i think that everybody's expecting uh tiago versus uh luciano and we believe he's going to be in muyumba versus in Uibolo. i think that that's that's a game we're, we're going to see um the other thing is that nobody's talking enough about how good this Two teams are defending. They are the two teams that have considered less goals this season. And I think that that these teams, if we go back to 2022, they were basically relying on how many goals they could score to win because they were very, very weak defensively. They were just relying on scoring two or three times per game so they can get a result. So I don't ex- I ex- I I, uh, um, I I expect a great game for those who like watching the details of the game. I don't expect like a game that will be hell break loose, goals here, goals zero, goals comes and goal and goal go. I think that it's going to be a very rich game, and and it's going to be one of those games that when you get home after the game, you are still thinking on moments, movements. <laughs> situations that happen, uh, tactical movements. Um, and I really like what uh, Gonzalo have, have shown as a coach, right? Uh, we know he had great mentors, but I think that he has evolved as a coach in, in this his second start of the season, right? Because in the 2022, he arrived mid-season. You know, it's... So I want to I kind of hit on that point that you made about you know, maybe the players not getting their highlight reel package, but contributing to the team in a, in a big way. And I think one player that we're always going to talk about is Tiago Amada. But you look at the games this season and his numbers in terms of goals and assists, you know, they're they're not where they were, which is, this is my opinion, it's fine because I feel like he's doing more of the dirty work. And after the summer transfer window last year, he had players that came in that could take a lot of the pressure off of him. A lot of people don't necessarily agree with that, but in your opinion, watching Almada and, and, and the kind of number 10 role that he plays, what have you seen out of him this season so far, kind of in your, your prep coming up to this game? I think that the team is less predictable. And and I, I, I was having the, this discussion with a friend on why the, the 10 start disappearing, right? And, and if you just go to the board, playing with a number 10 is a predictable system. What happened is that the 10 is so good that that's why he he's the, the different maker, the quarterback in soccer is so good that even though you know that what he's going to do, he makes a different, right? Uh, but I think that uh, and at the beginning of the season uh, last year, Almada was so amazing because the team didn't have those midfielders we're talking. Um, I think Wolf was not playing at, that, at the level he was playing on the wings. We didn't know Jakomakis was as good as he was. Um, Jakomakis didn't have a substitute number nine when he was not available. So basically, Thiago was checking all the boxes. He was playing as a full number nine when Giacomakis was not there. He was basically jumping on the wing when the team was, when somebody builds from the middle. So he was checking all the boxes. And I think that the team is more collective now and that he understands that. And and, and for him to understand that, it's a great management from the, the, um, from the coach. Because you as a player, you always want to do it everything the more you touch the ball the better because you like playing playing right and and sometimes when the ball does not get you you start getting desperate and you and you drop back to get in contact with the ball you go to the wing and i think that tiago has evolved in that in that area he's holding position even though the game is going in another areas of the game because first the leadership of the coach second he now trusts that wolf can get it done uh lovianica can get it done uh, they can jump the line to Jakumakis from the, the the two more defensive midfielders. That the wingers are great players, um, so I think that it, it's kind of trust. It's it's easy to say always trust the process, but it's it's trusting what he's seeing around. 
So one of the big storylines coming into this match will be, of course, Miles Robinson. And he had such a rich history with it. Lenny and I unfortunately had the injury in 2022 that mm-hmm. kind of the real thanks for him. And he was never quite the same, we think, um, when he came back. Maybe a little bit of a different player as he's just trying to still get his legs, no pun intended, underneath him coming back from that injury. Um, what kind of a difference can Miles make uh, for Cincinnati? Obviously, Atlanta know all about him, but what kind of difference can he make in that back line with Atlanta? I mean, with Cincinnati, and you know, what what things have you seen from him thus far in 2024? I think that he has always been a great player, and and we know that. But I think that it's a different. Um, there's a point in your career that it's kind of around Miles' age. Age, sorry, when when you are closer to 28, more closer to to 30 than to 25, when you need to start leading the team, the the, the back line, not not because of what you can do physically or your read, but guiding the rest of the guys. And and for example, I will put you an example, and and, and I know that they are in different points of their career, but it's closer to that direction, or oh, that's the evolution I expect from Miles, uh, and it's game by game, but that's what I'm looking on, on him now. It's like um, Dallas was struggling. They 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 they, they had five, four games, four consecutive defeats, and they were going to San Luis, and they were and they brought in for that for that uh, game Omar Gonzalez, who is not fast, who he's barely played in the last couple of seasons. But he stepped in and he lead that back line and they got a shootout and getting a nil-nil in San Luis when you come from four defeats in a row, it's a good result. Was he amazing? No. Hey, he struggled with Joel Claus because he does not have the speed anymore to, to fight with them. But he lead the other guys. And I think that that's the evolution that we are expecting and that we should start seeing in, in, in Miles for the next couple of years is we know he's a good defender. We know he can solve a lot of problems. By 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 his quality, okay. Can he lead a back line? Because that that day it's it's getting closer, uh, and better to to be a leader at 28 than grabbing your head at 31 and says like, man, if he if he's not his physical strength, he cannot give us any anything else in the back line. Yeah, okay, and, and I, yeah. I believe he's gonna get there. I'm I'm just putting the the, the comparison right. Yeah, and that's one of the things we saw with him in Atlanta. I mean. He was that steady force in the back, but you know, Brad Guzan was more the vocal leader of this team, and he still is. We didn't really see a lot of that from Miles, so it's an interesting point that you bring up. Yeah, Matt Miaska, I think it was uh, last year. Um, the season didn't end good for him, uh, and and sometimes I, and I'm not talking about something about Cincinnati it's just like a general picture when 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 one of your leaders messed up a little bit you start doubting about uh your leader when when you're in a locker room right uh, and I'm, I'm not saying this about Cincinnati I'm just I'm just saying that uh a locker room it's always a um a constantly changing environment uh and Fair or unfair, you're 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 judged by your last game. Oh, that's yeah. that's sports. That's that's also what we do, man. <laughs> We're judged. You you are judged by how good the, the the last show you did is. No, because day. it was it wasn't very good. So <laughs> we can only move up. We can only keep going up. Well, that's always a good sign. That's always a good sign, and that's what I try to 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 convince myself. But yeah, it's like kind of like anything that it's. Uh, entertainment and yeah, sports entertainment is like you're judged by your, by your last show. Yeah. So it, it's funny you bring that up because I wanted to ask from a Cincinnati perspective, what does Cincinnati need to do to start scoring goals? Especially, I mean, you know, you mentioned a point earlier that I think has been like very glossed over when it comes to Atlanta because I think all of us still have PTSD. But defensively, Atlanta was not great last year or the year before. And they've actually been decent this year, this Philly game notwithstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
Cincinnati supporters shield winners last year, but they're they're struggling to score goals right now. So what what did they need to do against Atlanta to kind of fix that going into the bins? I don't think that it's something that you can fix against Atlanta. Uh, because if we go back to 2022, uh, that uh, Brenner, Brandon Vasquez, and Lucian Macosta was the, mo- the the team that scored the most goals that season, right? Yeah. Brenner left last season. It was just Vasquez. Uh, he was amazing, but the team had a different way of attacking because Lucho was not a third piece on the attacking front. He was always behind. And now you lose Brandon Vasquez. So we we, we are we got to put on the table that the team that scored the most goals two seasons ago now have lost the two top scorers of that season and their main scorer of last season. So it's not an easy replace. I think that Bo Pensa had has the quality, uh, but he had not been consistent uh, and not because he had not been consistent on the pitch, but for example, last year in the middle of the playoff, he was in the situation that he didn't come back on time. So, uh, and I, look, we're talking about leadership in the locker rooms. And I think that 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 player uh, believed more in a coach that says, I don't care if we need him, he failed us and he's not playing, that, that saying, oh yeah, but it was a small mistake, we need him, he, he should start. So, We've seen a uh, like in quality, Bo Pence is great, but if he's not able to be consistent for for different reasons, they're gonna start to need to see some somewhere else because I don't I don't think they have in the squad the replacement for those uh, guys that, that that left. Summer window is gonna be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And you know why? Because summer window is always a window when where whoever was not willing to spend no. in the winter <laughs> now spending is a must uh, no. and, and it's always I, a wild card because yes. you never know what's going to happen yeah. yes 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 so w- we want to be considerate to your sam i know that uh you were busy getting ready it's it's non-stop now in mls um but you've been to the bins a few times uh so i gotta ask and I, we may have asked you this last year, but have you found a spot, if you have time, that is, but have you found a spot here in Atlanta you like to go eat at, hang out at, or or, or chill at when you're when you're down here? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, um, I don't know what I'm saying this time. I, I received the email, so, <laughs> but I haven't checked it. It's been <laughs> crazy this, this, this three first days of the, of the week, but uh, uh, I'll be around. Are you going to be in the stadium, guys? I'm sure you're going to be in the stadium. Oh, yeah. We'll be up in the press box. For the sure. two of us will. Yeah. Know, yeah. This yeah. guy over here, uh, that way. He's up in Ohio, so he will not uh, be there. <laughs> so you're from Atlanta. I we I no, am. No, I'm he, from he, Atlanta. Yeah. Sydney's from New York, but Tommy, Tommy Tommy's got to tell you Ohio, a story. Midwest. I just live in Ohio. I, I live in Ohio. Boring Ohio. <laughs> But uh, I go to a lot of crew. I I see the crew a lot. Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, uh, like, how do you end up an Atlanta fan? I uh, I was a Falcons fan for a long time, and I really wasn't a huge soccer guy growing up. I I watched the occasional games, mostly national team, and I flew down for a Falcons game. And everybody told me to check out Atlanta United. I finally went to a game, and I fell in love, and I I got a team. Good man, it's a it's a it's a good team. It's a good team. Yeah, my my, my kids, they're still with every jersey from every game I call. Yeah. So <laughs> they're a little bit lost with that one. Uh, hey. My little one, yeah. it's very much in my, my my oldest one. He's very much into space. So um, you know, Minnesota nailed it for this season with the with the Galaxy yeah. and the Aurora Boreal shirt. So he's um, and they have the sponsor of the, the his favorite store. So. There you go. <laughs> so, I sounds like have a comeback with that. Yeah, that sounds like my oldest because he's obsessed with space as well. Like very much into like NASA and everything space related. So I've been trying to hide that jersey from him because I don't need yeah. him trying to like betray me and go off. And <laughs> yeah. Best jersey in MLS. It, it's good. It's good. Yeah. 
really like yeah, it. Yeah, it's good. But what I like about Atlanta jersey is that it's consistent. I'm I'm a very traditional guy in terms of soccer, and, and I think that colors and 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 stripes should be the same every year. So I I, I like that on Atlanta that that the shirts, in a way, they look very similar from season to season. People would believe it are boring. For me, for traditional, this is like that's how they should be. Yeah. If they can stick to some variation of just five stripes right? in, in, in whatever you want to do with it, but keep it five stripes or roughly five stripes, the bigger stripes, yeah. I think that will appease the fan base for the most part. And then you do the one-off things like this, right? Or the, the resurgence kit, like they're cool, but you always keep your base one similar. And I think that yeah. makes everybody happy. Yeah. You, you know, I'm like, I'm a big fan of a striped team. Uh, and uh, I haven't buy a jersey in five years because now the stripes are not straight, and then they even change the logo. <laughs> so I don't have anything with the old logo, <laughs> with the new logo. So, yep. Yeah, I. They even build a new stadium, and uh, oh, where is it? I had a, a die cast of the old stadium. I'm a oh, that's Madrid cool. fan, so, oh, yeah. That's so cool. yeah, so. Um, yeah, I'm a very, I'm a very weird person for modern soccer. I think. <laughs> hey, that's okay. You know what? I, no we've got, it's really cool because we've gotten so much show and tell in this episode. It's freaking great. We love this kind of stuff. So next time you're on, by all means, bring all the stuff. And yeah, you can show absolutely. absolutely. I have it somewhere here, man. Uh, <laughs> I have it somewhere. I, I promise you, like, if I, if, if the cable, let me reach it. I, I have a couple, uh -oh. you know, I want to show something. Are you good? My wife, yeah, my wife does not know that I have this here. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Must it means it costs a lot. I call I call four three World Cups with these shoes. Oh wow. The the the, the grass that you see there is from Lushniki Stadium. From That's awesome. Two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Do I not ever let anybody clean those. Yeah, exactly. Here's, <laughs> here's the stadium, you see? Old Vicente uh, Calderon Stadium. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, guys, that I I went in all type of directions. No, no, yeah. that we yeah. that's what we're here for. This is the, yeah. the kind of content that we need. We like this. This is a headset from the last World Cup. Okay. Right there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm wow. I'm Ecuadorian, yeah. uh, and even though I what I went to three World Cups before this one, I've never called an Ecuador game in a World Cup, and I've never called it uh, a game in stadium. I was doing like. A lot of stuff, but no. And uh, this year, I got the chance, and Ecuador played the, the inaugural game and everything. Mm -hmm. So when we finished, I just took the <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, how much is it? No, but you got no. I pay it. This is something that I <laughs> that has a value for for forever. For just sure. Real, real quick, are you calling Copa America matches at all, or no? No, no. Um, I want I wanted to do it. But it's very hard to to put everything together, uh, and uh, uh, MLS is my priority. Yeah. I, I love I love like what I'm doing with, with MLS, but also the the summer part of MLS for me is the most fun part of the season because I bring my kids with me to most of the places. Nice. So uh, it, it's yeah, it, it's it's it, it's a time for them, right? That's that it's out of for every weekend during the, the spring and the on the on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the fall. So summer we travel together and and, yeah. and uh, I have great cities and and uh, that was the plan. So, awesome. uh, yeah, sweet, awesome. Well, good stuff, man. So then I'm sure we will see you um, coming up here in a couple of days. Yeah. We can get an ice cream there in the stadium. I know, right? Exactly. Hey, <laughs> I'll come wood as long as that Carvel right. machine is working. But I, I made a video last week, two weeks ago in San Luis with um, the fried raviolis. Ooh, I that saw that. Ooh. So that was, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I'll have to get some whenever I'm out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super, it was super fun. But yeah, guys, hey, hey, a pleasure talking to you. Any, anytime yeah. you need me, anytime you're bored and you don't have anybody to come to the show and, and you want somebody to throw stuff in unpredictable directions, call me. <laughs> Absolutely. Always. And you're always welcome, man. We appreciate yes. it. Yes. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, yes. Adios. See you. Thank you. Good stuff. Good stuff.
Yes. Hi, Mimesius, everybody. I Thank assume you. he played Mario Kart. He brings out a whole simulator. Like, what a flex <laughs> that's that amazing. was. <laughs> that's amazing. I want to get to F1. Like, I know people are like diehard fans of it. <clears throat> I've never been able to really get into it. I mean, me neither. Maybe, so, maybe next year. Sydney, this is this is where <laughs> this is how we bond. All right, because I need people to explain to me what it's all like. What's the hype over it? Because it seemed like Good. out of nowhere. Like out of left field, everybody was like obsessed with F1. I'm like, what happened? Like, I, I can appreciate a good race, but like I did not know it was like this. It blew up. <laughs> like every every like Saturday and Sunday mornings he tweeted up next for stopping and Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes and all of that. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe something I'll pick up here eventually. Now, if we could take I'm into Fast and Furious. That's that's what I'm that's my racing. That's my racing like <laughs> limit. That's a I mean all, all all 13 of the movies. <laughs> if I can take Jaime's um like F1 simulator and play some Mario Kart in that, dude, I would I would have I would I would never remove the helmet. There we go. <laughs> I would never Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Yeah, it would just be like we talked about earlier. I like it. Who's your all favorite right. racer in Mario Kart? Yoshi. Oh, Mario. That's the OG. What about yours? Donkey Kong. Okay. But he's slower. Okay. But man, if he hits you. You're oh, a Donkey yeah. Kong fan? That's that. That's that. Yes, yeah, that weight. That's Here's that. how old I am. I'll be because I am the oldest one on here. I am the blockbuster Donkey Kong Country champion of Parma, Ohio. I beat adults. As a child, oh yeah, I got free rentals from Blockbuster for one month. You thought I was going to hey. say year? No, no, no. <laughs> I got it for one month, and I, I just kept going. Way. I was cycling. I was begging my parents to drive me to Blockbuster, and I exchanged the games twice. Wow! <laughs> so I only got two rentals for we'll being the the Blockbuster Donkey Kong Country yeah. <laughs> champion. It's my favorite video game of all time. Nice. Which SMBS which one favorite. was it? The first one, so, like, like so on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I can, yeah, yeah. I, put, yeah, I beat them all. Yeah, I mean the main ones were the main three were on Super Nintendo. I like it. I like it. You can go back and play them on the Switch now too. Fun fact. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, man, this has been a very Mario Kart themed episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we still have a match to talk about. We've talked about it a little bit with with Jaime, but we really quickly. Need to finish up the the chat about the the rule changes. So we talked about the VAR thing. I'm gonna move my other co-host here. Um, it's very quiet. It doesn't say much. I know he doesn't talk a lot. <laughs> That's okay. He chimes in when it's most needed. Um. All right. So we. I'm I'm pulling up the email specifically. Uh, so I think I I have it in front of me too, okay, cool. kind of, but um. Yeah, you have 10 seconds to, if you go down, you have 10 seconds to leave the field. I mean, if you're down for more than 10 seconds, the referee stops play. Uh, and then when it's safe, the ref or the training team moves them out the field. Players will be out for two minutes for further trivia assessment, according to press release here. And then the time substitution rule, if you're subbed out, you have to leave the pit- pitch within 10 seconds. If not the incoming player has to wait 60 seconds to come in. So no more kind of trudging off the field and all that. You just got to get off however you can in the nearest point of exit. And that's kind of a subset of a role put into place a few years back because now as a substitute, you don't have to go toward the technical area. You can leave the pitch anywhere you want, just as long as you get off within 10 seconds. If you don't, he has to wait 60 or two minutes before they can put in the player. And then, Tyler, like we you mentioned before, a VAR announcements are made in stadium, all at NFL, um, NBA, all the other big sports. So, yeah, that's good taking into effect on Saturday. It's supposed to take effect beginning of the season, but with the um, referee strike um, or the lockout, I should say, that was put on pause. But that's in- coming into place on Saturday, starting with Saturday's matches. So, it'll be interesting to see how that works, how teams kind of adjust to that adjust to this new normal and yeah yep can i ask you a question yeah sure do you think with the 
if if you if you get injured, you're down for more than next what's ten seconds? You said. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen seconds, and then you're off, and then you're out for two minutes. Yeah. Right. right. Yep. How how can this be a negative? Well, you know how some teams like to play at. Uh, I won't mention who is. No, how can this be a negative though? To 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 like to to a team? Oh, uh, like, okay. Yeah, like okay. that. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I understand that. Like, I think the San Jose game last year was a perfect example of like perfect time wasting by San Jose to try to you know at, at that opener last year. But how does it affect a team negatively? Because you look at, at, at rule changes, and one specifically that's out there right now that everyone's looking at is is the is the pitch counter, right? And MLB and like injuries that are happening, and you know Strider went down, and like who knows if that actually involved it, but. How how could this be a ne- if we look at this rule, April seventeenth, twenty twenty five? Are we gonna say that we there's something that we don't like about this? Kyle coming in hot. <laughs> good. <laughs> this is what I want to talk about. Good. Good. Possibly play through injury. Yeah, I mean, you don't want players like going down, like after they get like bumped into. And they're rolling around like they've been shot or anything like that. So I think, yeah, this definitely discourages that. But from a negative, um, like Kyle's saying, you know, players may want to try to, <clears throat> excuse me, push on um, when they don't need to. I think traders will be keeping an eye on that. So it kind of motioning, hey, okay, you need to go down and, you know, signal for a sub. And, you know, if you can't carry on. So I think there'll be a few mechanisms to, prevent against that but yeah I, t- I totally see where kyle's going for sure but i think you know the the reason the rules in play is right is to prevent like to feel like, feel like the dark arts and stuff like that you know i could see if this rule is successful in mls it will kind of spread to maybe overseas leagues <clears throat> i don't know if we can make keys will put this into place or anything like that because they'll just take away one of their competitive advantages that they have over mls but I I'm I think, not, I don't hate it. No, I don't either. And I, and I think to the question specifically, it just means that the players are going to have to be brutally honest with the trainers and with themselves. I mean, unfortunately, this has gone on for so long and is such an ingrained part of soccer culture, professional soccer culture at this point, that the, <laughs> the forefathers, if that's what we want to call them, have kind of set up the players now to be in a rough position in this sense, because you're, this is what you're trained to do, right? Like how, I don't know how much dark arts, you know, education you received as a, as a kid playing soccer and coming up through, you know, the, the age groups and all, but like you received some, whether you meant to or not, right? Like you were told at some point in your soccer career, how to expound upon the dark arts and this is the defense against the dark arts if we're using Harry Potter references. So, right. I mean, it needs to happen, but there is going to be, I think, especially for some of the older players, there's going to be a, a little bit of a, you know, come to Jesus moment, I think, because you're going to have players that they're just not going to be on board with this and, and they're going to have to get used to it, whether they like it or not. Yeah. And yeah, if you go down with a bad injury and you're that kind of player that just is dead set on playing through it, then yeah, I mean, it might come back to bite you. But this is, again, where the the clubs themselves have to be telling their players, like, look, if you're hurt, you need to tell us. You need to be honest with yourself. Like, you're going to come off for two minutes anyway, so you need to just let us tend to you and figure it out, and we then we determine whether you're coming back on or not. If they don't, then yeah, I, I could see, you know, uh, let's say something happened in the 30th minute and then all of a sudden in the 60th minute, the same player goes down and can't continue because he just kept playing through something. So I get that that side of it for sure. But the rule's not going away. So the clubs have to approach it in their own way, which yeah. I think the best way is just to be straight up and say, look, we can't do this anymore. We have to fix it and we have to take this culture and change it now. And yeah, if if you're hurt, Tell us. Be honest with us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The only one I can think of is like if maybe, and and again, this is just 
fan fiction, but like if the refs aren't doing their job and, and it's very open and, and players are purposely trying to take guys down to get a, a, a two minute man advantage. I don't know. Oh. And we, we know these, these refs don't call a lot of things that they should be calling. Sometimes they're a little bit more free. I don't know. We'll see. I, was, yeah. I That's what I was just trying to think of. It's just of something, you it's, know, and it's going to be an adjustment sort. for everybody. So, yeah. I'm interested to see what that adjustment period will look like. That's a that's a good point though, for sure. Um absolutely because you know, there aren't many out there, but you do have a couple of players that may not have as gold of a heart as some others and may look at this as an opportunity. I don't want to yeah. put evil on anybody. Right. But the fact of the matter is everybody's human and everybody has their own competitive way of doing things and it's going to happen at some point. It may not be this season. It may not be next season. But yeah, it'll you'll you'll have that happen eventually, Tommy. Whether it's in fan fiction or not, right? Um. So yeah, right. it's coming Sunday, Saturday. Tommy, you had a you had a thing. You had a question. Oh, yeah, I did. I you know I I hear people talk about the twos, and I don't really see a lot mm-hmm. of people that watch the twos in general. And as a guy that used to be a season ticket holder to a minor league hockey team, I know that there's a lot of ups and downs. Players get called up. There's, you know, some. it's just sometimes not high quality. But I was looking at the, the two's overall record over the last three seasons. 23 wins, 50 losses, and 21 draws. How, how do you, how do you, how do you get into it? Tell me, tell me how to enjoy the twos. Um, because it's yeah. bad. That's a bad record. If it is a bad record. You don't, you don't go just looking at the the team as a whole. Of course, you want to see the identity of the club when they play. Absolutely. But you got to go into it looking at individual performances, and you have to go into it with the mindset that if you want to be able to make a a more informed. I'm not saying right or wrong, but a more informed opinion of the club as a whole and the and the first team as a whole. There are players on the twos that you need to pay attention to. Um, Noah Cobb is a perfect example because Noah Cobb, like even going back to when we first started Spaces, I was talking about Noah Cobb and about how I think he's going to be that next guy to step up, similar to Miles Robinson. That was two and a half years ago, and here we are, and he's. I feel more comfortable right now with him than his counterpart starting. <laughs> and by counterpart, I mean Louisa Brom. And that's not a knock against Louisa Brom. I just think Noah Cobb has been molded in the shape of this club in a way that fits it really well. I think his his soccer IQ is probably well beyond his years. He's way more athletic than he gets credit for. But you wouldn't know a ton of that unless you just listen to us, which is you should do anyway. Um or you were watching the twos. And so, yeah, I mean, I just, I think there's just so much more to it than just going to the, you know, whatever to Apple TV or the website, turning on the twos game and watching them as if you were just watching the first team. Yes. Go have fun, be entertained, right. hopefully win, but you know, pick out the players that you you've heard of before. If you're not a big fan of the twos, you haven't followed them a lot. Go and watch them. Pick out the Noah Cobbs, pick out the the Luke Brennans, pick out the um, yeah, the yeah, there's so many. And just see what they do. Javier Armas Nick is another Mina. one. Yep. So that's how you kind of I think you can look at like a Nick Firmino when he makes his first appearance as an Atlanta player, and you think, all right, this is good. And then he goes and scores a yeah. goal five minutes later. You can say, All right, cool. Like at least I knew what he was gonna bring, and I hoped he would bring it to the first team, and he did, right? It, at least in that situation. So I don't think you need to go into it with the, the mindset that they're going to go and win the title a year. Yeah. Year. yeah. But there are other teams that win though, right? Yeah. And there are good teams, right? There's, there's teams that have to be winning at, at, at some point. And it's just looking at a three year record overall. I was just, I, I was curious because it seems, you know, that we have a good Academy. Yeah. And why, can't they put it together i guess to, to actually win 
to win games because I think sometimes creating a winning mentality and, and, t- and tell me if I'm wrong here it's just I, I go and I look at like other like again minor league hockey I go to I watch a lot of minor league hockey and the team they won a championship a lot of those guys move up and you know continue that same winning mentality I don't know just just a thought I, I wanted you to sell it to me I mean I, I've tried to watch it every year. I try to watch one or two games, and I just I, I can't get into it overall. Did he sell just, it to you? Yeah. Eh, maybe I'll watch one more. <laughs> I'll try. Well, Tom, Tyler, you can work on that throughout the year. Yeah, Steve Cook I'm will tell you, the head coach. He will tell you they are not just there to get reps in; they are trying to win a title. But also, you have to look at the personnel and the. The ultimate goal of every academy and, and MLS Next Pro team is to be a feeder to the first team. And 90% of the players in the second team aren't going to make it to the first team. That's just how it is. No. So that's why no, you no. just have to go into it looking at it from an a individual perspective as opposed to a full team perspective, in my opinion. That's just the way I do it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. exactly. All right, Cincinnati. you first team. Yes. Cincinnati. What do we think? What are what are our initial thoughts? I think I agree with Jaime. There's not going to be a lot of goals in it. Unfortunately, you know, Cincinnati has to right. find them. Dan, I, I just I keep putting his stuff up here, and I don't, I don't want him to feel left out. Really quick, there isn't a set 11 with two players supplemented by Academy kids. There's, there's reasons why it's tough for them to win all the time. So, But I didn't want Dan feeling left out. I need to throw that in there because it's a very good point, but carry on. I'm so sorry. So I, I agree with Jaime. I don't think there'll be a lot of goals in it. You know, Cincinnati, you know, eight goals in eight MLS matches. And he's right. The attacking firepower that they had with Brenner, that they had with Vasquez is gone. The Pensta, you're looking at, you know, can he, well, not can he come good, but can he become a supplemental piece? Can he live up to that DP? contract um you know what you're gonna get with um costa you know defending mvp of the league um but yeah i don't know if there's gonna be a lot of goals in this it's gonna be really tooth and nail kind of match i think at mercedes-benz stadium uh <clears throat> cincinnati you know for them not scoring a lot of goals they don't give up a lot of goals either give up seven goals in eight matches um solentano is one of the top young players at mls Young goalkeeper in the MLS, I should say, and they have this guy named Miles Robinson. Is pretty good. Uh, they also have, um, yeah, pretty decent. Uh, Matt Miaska, who's another part of that uh, back line as well. So, I mean, this is going to be a tooth and nail match. This is not going to be a match where a lot of teams or a lot of goals are going to be scored. And can Atlanta United contend in a match like that? Um, can they beat a team that you know we already know they're gonna not give up a lot of goals or you know give up a lot of chances? And how does the lady not handle himself in that? You know whether or not Sean um, GD starts, whether or not Sunday starts, both of them train on Tuesday, of course. But whether they start, it's still gonna be tough. You know, from a defensive standpoint for a lady United. You know, from an offense attacking standpoint, I should say. So, how do you manage that? How do they really break down this really good Cincinnati defense that has been very stingy up thus far? So, again, it won't be a track meet, I don't think. And if you like offense, you know, this probably won't be the match for you. <laughs> I will say that. I think he sold MLS uh, the the twos better than you sold this match. <laughs> I, I mean, you're not, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. I think, I think the goals, I think the goals will come, but yeah, I don't think it's going to be like a super back and forth match. I think there's gonna be a, a big feeling out period, probably in the first half, definitely in the first half, but I mean like well into the first half, um, where these teams just kind of get settled in and yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily feel like. Um, it's easy to predict because I think if this were Steon Gregerson and Derek Williams starting at the back, I would be confident saying this is a 2-0 win for Atlanta United. And I know that's 
maybe a little crazy, but I just think with the way that Cincinnati's offense is right now, I think that those two could handle it really well. That's not to say Noah Cobb and, and Louisa Brom can't handle it. I just think, you know, obviously there's a difference there. So I just, what I foresee is them coming out, Atlanta coming out similar to what they did last, uh, last match. But I think, I hope that Yakimakis can give you at least 20 or 30 minutes at the end of the game. And I don't think he starts because I think that would be kind of crazy at this point. But if he can give you 20 or 30 minutes at the end of the game to be fresh legs against a tired Miles Robinson, a player that he has trained with and played with in the past, maybe he can he can sneak one in to give you the win. Like I said earlier, the last two games you played against Cincinnati, you, you've got the lead on them early. Both yep. games. You got to do that again. But the question is, is can then you defend? And that was not the case. When you look at the game on decision day, that was a game where it just was back and forth and like they weren't even covering Acosta, I think, on one of the on one of the plays. Yep. You got like a header over somebody, like how that happened when he's three feet tall. Uh, <laughs> and that's there was that. And then the one at the Benz was probably the one of the most disappointing games of the season last year for me because you looked so good. You controlled that game. You it was the same thing that was last game. You couldn't finish your chances, right? And then as it the game started, it came down to the end. Instead of trying to shut things down, they wanted to make it a track race. And you lost. You lost that track race to, to Cincinnati. So that that's something that's real important here is can you learn from your previous mistakes? And, and that's what we were saying earlier. Can Pineda learn from, you know, mistakes from this last game? Well, it, you had two situations with Cincinnati last year where you really were taking it to them in both games. You just couldn't hold off. And then Almada forgot that he had a yellow, and that was the, the dumbest thing ever. But yeah, other than that, I mean, you were really you were you had control of that game until Amato went down. You still got a, you still got a point out of that, which was impressive. But yeah, be smarter. When Amato got a yellow last game, I saw somebody Amato. please <laughs> somebody please write on his hand. I have a yellow. Yeah, <laughs> put it on his boots. The way he sees it every time he kicks. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I was kind of dive into predictions. I don't see this being anything other than a one-one match. Just the way. Cincinnati has played just how he's just going to be kind of worked in, you know, after missing a few games and just how Sean is going to be worked in. I don't think, like I said, I don't think this is going to be a match where you're going to see a lot of offense. You're going to see a lot of chances, you know, like I said earlier, if you don't like <laughs> attacking football, this match is going to be for you. And no, that's okay. You know, they will all be that way. So I think one, one, um, I think, Letting that it draws Cincinnati, but it won't be as disappointing as a draw against Philadelphia, I don't think. What do you guys think? Tommy, what you got? I'm still thinking. You go. Uh, well, Gonzalo Panetta, if you're listening, I really need you to help me out here because I'm in the wooden spoon race in our predictions right now. <laughs> I don't like to be there. Uh, so I'm setting myself up for a good comeback. 2-1 uh, to Atlanta. I don't think that there's a clean sheet. As good as these defenses are, I don't think Atlanta's defense is going to be good enough quite to keep out one goal. But I don't think Cincinnati's defense is going to be enough to stop Atlanta's really, really good attack at this point. So it's a, it's at home. You again, you got to win your games at home. You can't you can't have matches like that um, against Philly. So yeah, I I think two one. For what it's worth, Cincinnati has allowed two goals in its last two MLS matches. So, and they've lost their past two. And they've lost their past two. So, I bet against Atlanta on on Sunday. What do you? Why? Why? Because I did. Because I thought that they weren't going to win, and then if it was a draw, I got my money back. That's that's how that went. But I was like, man, I feel when it was two nothing, I was like, why? Why did I do this? I'm an idiot. Tyler's probably judging me right now if I sent him the bet that I made. I think Atlanta wins this game. And I didn't feel that way when I woke up this morning. Oh. I didn't. I, I 
I'm going to say that it's going to be one nothing Atlanta. Okay. I like it. I will say that Cobb makes me a little bit nervous because I felt like he was flirting with a yellow in that first half. He was very aggressive. And young players, and no matter what sport you look at, sometimes don't get the leeway as the vets. And I was really shocked that he didn't get a yellow because I'm, I, w- I was afraid of him getting on a yellow in this game where it was high intensity. Uh, you know, blood was boiling at, at points. I was really nervous how I was going to do that, but he didn't get one. So, I mean, that was that was fine. I mean, a, a couple people in our spaces like even thought that he had one, a yellow at, at early in the game. I said, no, I mean, I went back and looked and he didn't. But I mean, he was he was very aggressive in that game. And if you don't get called for it, keep doing it. Yeah, keep doing it. So long as he could stay out of that, and Abram looked good. I thought they both looked good as a combination. I mean, Sleesh is obviously a huge part of that as well. You can keep that going. You can keep those three. That was what we said all season. We know this team can score goals. We know they can, and that's they're still scoring goals. And we know that there's more there, like we said earlier. But those three, or whether it's you know Gregerson and Williams returns, they can keep doing what they're doing. You can win an MLS Cup. Yeah, it's a big F. Yeah. I mean, but it's but it's true though. The thing is, like when this team it's is a rolling, medium if it's a medium if they're they're one of the better teams in the league for sure. And that it's funny because that actually goes to this this quick point. Colonel brought up. He said he's disappointed in my my sneaking a goal late plan. If Atlanta are a good side at home, they must cruise. Um, I agree. He, no, I don't necessarily Except really have to do that. It's just no. that this last match. They did everything I wanted them to do. They were dominating a team at home, and then they freaking fell apart. And it was like, yeah. oh, we were cruising, and then we stopped cruising, and we jumped in the freaking middle of the Gulf of Mexico. That's yeah, a it, different team, though. I, I know, but it's just they they when they play well for ninety minutes, when they keep their head screwed on for ninety minutes, this team is very tough to beat. I'm just excited that next week we're gonna win our first road game of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me too. I'm already thinking of that. I'm 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 a week ahead already. We're we're when I just can't wait to come. I don't I just don't I want to stop hearing Atlanta can't win on the road. And they're like, well, it's just one win. It's just one win on the road. You know what? <laughs> we gotta win. We gotta play Cincinnati first, too, my friend. So And beat them one one step at a time. Just looking ahead in the calendar. Look getting ready for our watch party. Absolutely, which is a perfect segue. Um Justin, absolutely prepared for FCC to get rocked this Saturday. I would love that. I would love that. Nothing more. Um, Isn't Justin a Cincinnati guy? No, I don't think so. No. Well, there is a Justin that is a Cincinnati guy that we had on. Was it Justin? Uh, I forget. I mean, it's, definitely not, it's definitely not that Justin because he just said he wanted them to get rocked. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he's a well, he said comment. he was prepared. Oh, see? Look, he said yes. Oh. Oh, well, he's oh. Benedict Arnold. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I recognized him. He was on the the Battered Heron show, and I think oh, we yeah. talked to him. Yeah, so nice. see, Ju- see, Justin, Justin's nice. the negative one uh, of of his show. <laughs> I like it. Um. Anyway, so yeah, the so we have the game this week or weekend, and then next week for our patrons, you just come on over patreon.com slash scarves and spikes. You can join up. Um, we have content that goes on there as well. Of course, you have access to the Discord, which is really fun, really awesome. We talk about everything, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, but it's just a fun place to be, and it helps support what we're doing over on scarvesandspikes.com and here at the podcast. So one of those benefits is hanging out, doing a watch along online on Zoom. It's still gonna be Zoom, right, Tommy? Or am I? Yep, still Zoom yep. for right now. So we just we hang out and it's like having a bunch of people in your room hanging out, except they're all on a computer screen. <laughs> you can <laughs> it's cheaper than going out to a bar <laughs> much cheaper and uh yeah we just we just have a good time hopefully a, a much better time when it's a win but um exactly i don't think we've ever been on one with a win have we i don't think so <laughs> really? we've had draws we've had blown leads we've had draws for sure the first three that we did i think were draws actually yeah and then and then that gotta change that next week <laughs> yeah so y'all come help us change it next week bring the support come have fun with us other than that um, scarvesandspikes.com scarves the letter in spikes over on twitter slash x and uh, follow us subscribe on youtube if you just caught this and you happen to see it on twitter or twitch or whatever go over to youtube subscribe because we really appreciate it we are so close to a thousand uh and by so close i mean like 75 or so away 85 there. um 
we want to get there. And we have almost 600 people watching this right now, which is phenomenal. This is mm-hmm. the biggest number we love you. at one time by far. And so just know that That's we appreciate good. it immensely. We love you. We love you very much. And with that, I think it's perfect time. Don't, to don't, don't beat around the bush. Don't just say anything. We, we, love we love you. We love you. Yeah, we love you. Cue yes, the music. We, love you, we love you. We love you. We love you. Look, I, oh no, you, wait a minute. Put me back on. Go off. Go Put me back on. Put me back on. <laughs> There we All go. Right, thing thing again. All right, now you I can... tried to do that on my phone the other day and it didn't do it. And I was trying to tell people that it worked and it didn't. <laughs> I just felt like an idiot. Well, you can show them this episode as proof. I want to do it though. <laughs> you know what else I want to do? What do you want to do? I want to play Mario Kart. Uh, I mean, I have a Switch if you want to lose. Oh, oh no, no, no. Hey. Oh, boy. Not, ooh, I need to figure out how to that, hook up. This sounds like a challenge. It sounds and like we, a challenge. We will do an episode where we race, sir. <laughs> Pink slips and everything. You guys work that out. I'll um, <laughs> I'll get in and beat you guys. Oh my god, <laughs> Sydney's trash talking. <laughs> this has never happened. <laughs> we need it. We need to get you a tutor on trash talking, though. Yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, just be like, Tyler, you suck. You're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I've given my children PhDs in trash talking, so it'll be fun, I think. Look, we've all got right, well, the, the music, the music now is just dead really? silence. Yeah, let's loop it. <laughs> Good night, all. Night. See y'all. So long. Bye.